Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to service the coolant on your Toyota Hybrid, both the inverter coolant and the engine coolant. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get to work. So a small overview before we get started. The car we're working on today is a 2010 Prius. The information in this video is actually gonna to apply to all models and I'll, as we go through this, I will tell you the differences between different models so you have all the information for all models in one video. Before we get started, you want to locate where your engine coolant reservoir is and where your inverter coolant reservoir is. In the case of the Prius, here is the Inverter coolant reservoir and the coolant and the engine coolant is right here. Some models will have a typical radiator cap that will be your engine coolant and the separate bottle will always be your inverter coolant. Now when you start draining if you're not sure which one is which you can open both caps start draining one of them and the one that comes down is the inverter because we're going to start draining the inverter first. But the first thing we're going to do before we start this is you're going to take both caps off if you have a radiator cap, make sure you take it out as well, but be careful. We're gonna try to do this when the engine is cold to prevent us working with hot coolant. So let's take both caps off and let's go underneath the car and start draining the coolant. So folks, most of these cars will have covers, big covers like this. You're gonna wanna remove this cover. Two things you want to expose. One is the bottom of the radiator, which is usually in the front. The other one is the bottom of the transmission. Now, you got two types of drains. Let's remove this cover and we'll talk about the drains for the inverter coolant. Folks, you'll notice that this car is dripping water. That's actually snow melting. So if you don't live in the rust belt where there's snow, uh, welcome to working on cars in the winter. Let's take the shield off. Folks, this would be a good opportunity to replace any clips that were broken, bolts that are missing from underneath the car. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. You're going to want to lift the car up. You can lift just the front. I'm using a quick jack so the whole car is off the floor. But if you're using just jack stands, you can lift the front up. When you do drain the inverter coolant though, which we'll talk about in a second here, you do want to have the car level. So maybe lift it up have the coolant start draining and then lower the car up just so it would drain all the way before we continue. So now let me show you the drain and we'll start draining. All right folks, so we're we're underneath the underneath the transmission. This is your transmission, engines on the other side. One style of of drains for the inverter will be on the transmission directly. There's a 10 millimeter hex right here. There is your drain. Now another style is you're going to have a separate drain on a hose just like you see in this picture some of these ones that have main, namely the highlanders they will also have this drain but when you take it out nothing comes out no cooling comes out so if you have that case look by the front where they're between the radiator and the transmission and you'll see a hose with a drain some of the newer ones will have that the prius c will have that but some of the older ones will have the drain on the transmission. So like I said, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter hex to drain it. You're gonna need a drain pan, put it right underneath it, and be ready, because this will come out with such high pressure and velocity that it's gonna, it tends to make a mess. So let's drain it. As soon as you open the drain, you're gonna notice it's gonna start dripping. On the ones that, don't have coolant here, nothing will happen. So we're gonna take this, it's gonna make a mess, so be ready for it. You'll see how fast it comes out once I take the drain plug all the way out. There it is. You 
You'll notice there's not a lot of coolant here. It's just gonna keep draining like that. We're gonna wait for it to completely finish draining. So let's wait for it to drain. So now that it got to a slow drip like this, we're gonna reinstall the drain plug. We're gonna take the old washer out. Here's the old washer. We're gonna replace it with a new one. I'll leave the part number right here. Tighten your drain plug. Now we're gonna drain the radiator. Most Toyota radiators will have a drain just like this. So you're gonna place your pan underneath it. It'll usually be at the bottom of the radiator to, this, to one side, either the driver's side or the passenger side. In the case of this Prius, it's to the driver's side. So you're just gonna go underneath, open the yellow drain cock. It's like so. If you do have a hard time taking this drain cock off, you can use a plier and slightly kind of turn it because sometimes your hand force is not strong enough. We're just going to turn it until the coolant starts draining and then we'll let this one drain. This one is going to take a long time to drain so I'm going to cut the video and move it when it's done because you also want this to finish draining completely where you have nothing coming out. Now that it's done draining, we're going to go in the back, close the drain. At this point, install your, your shield back and let's go to bleed the car. All right, folks, the car is back. Put the car back after you put all the covers back. We're gonna fill the coolants. Now the car is not on yet. We're just gonna do our initial fill. Let's talk about a few things. First, always use original coolant. I don't understand what's the point. The price is the same as aftermarket. Always use the original, don't risk it. That's the first thing. The second thing is, you know me if you watch my videos, I don't like to not use a funnel. A lot of mechanics take a point of pride in that. I don't. I take pride in not making a mess. That's up to you though. I want to introduce you to this style funnel. This is a spill free funnel. They usually come with all kinds of accessories that go on your radiator. I highly recommend you use this, even if you're doing a Prius or one with a radiator or you own any automobile. If you're a DIY mechanic, this should be in your tool set. I will leave a link in the description below where you can find this through my Amazon affiliate page. Having said that, if you have a Prius like this one, this funnel without any accessory fits perfectly here where you can add the coolant and not have to worry about any spills. I put a funnel there. What we're gonna do, you're gonna fill it to the full mark and wait for it to drop down. That's our initial fill. Another thing is, these are Toyota coolant. Toyota recently changed the bottle of the coolant. I'll leave a picture right here so you can see the difference. Just so another way for you to distinguish really old stock or newer stuff. This just came out. So if you're watching a video a year from now and you get one of the old bottles with either the pink cap or the worst, the yellow cap, that's old coolant. Just letting you know, let's fill the coolant. Now, once you've filled the coolants, the initial fill, I want you to go to the inverter and actually overfill it. The reason is as soon as that pump comes on, this level will drop so fast. So you're actually gonna want to move faster and fill it up. Don't let that pump run dry too long because you're gonna hear it start making noise. And that's actually not healthy for the inverter pump. Over here, you also have an electric pump. However, the capacity here is much bigger. So likely that pump is not gonna run low. The, what's gonna be low is the radiator but your inverter, you wanna keep an eye on that. As soon as you start the car to bleed it, you're gonna to wanna to top it off right away, which I will show you in a second once we're done. So I'm gonna slightly overfill this, not all the way to the top, but just high enough where it doesn't overflow, just like that, and we're good. Now, let's go put the car in maintenance mode, and we'll talk about what that means and how to do it. So let me show you how to put your Toyota Hybrid in, in maintenance mode. Let me tell you a few things about maintenance mode. The first thing is, this procedure applies to all hybrid models. 
when you're done putting it in maintenance mode, it's going to display maintenance mode on the screen. The only exception is the second generation Prius and the first generation Prius. They'll just display an exclamation mark on the radio screen. That's how you know it's in maintenance mode. In maintenance mode, the engine will run continuously. It's not going to stop. You can drive the car for very short periods for diagnosis purposes. Never drive the car in maintenance mode all day long. If you do this, you're going to cause some serious damage to the hybrid system. Don't attempt to drive the car in maintenance mode. You can keep it running, stopped, as long as you need if you're doing any kind of diagnosis. But driving-wise, do not do that. So to put the car in maintenance mode, we're going to start foot off the brake. We're going to press the power button. Or if you have a physical key, you're going to turn it to the on position. Once the car is on, we're going to press the gas pedal all the way to the floor twice. One, two. Press the brake pedal. Put the car in neutral. Again, one, two two on the gas pedal. Press the brake again, put the car in park. One, two on the gas pedal, and then push the brake pedal down and start the car. Now the car is in maintenance mode. Also, before you start this whole procedure, you're gonna want to turn off your heater completely. As we bleed this car, you want the heater off. And we'll open the garage door. Make sure you have the garage door open when you do this because you're going to get fumes, you're going to get, oh, the engine will be running basically, so you don't want to do this in a closed space. So folks, before we continue, I want to tell you one thing. As soon as you put this car in maintenance mode, you're going to want to run to the front and top off your inverted coolant because it's going to drop rapidly and the pump will start making a noise because it's running dry. You don't want that to happen too long, so immediately top it off and you're good to go. Before we continue though with this video, if you're watching this video, you're likely a DIY mechanic and you would really use a repair manual for all your different repairs on the cars. Luckily, my good friends at emanualonline.com got in touch with me, contacted me. They wanted me to share their website with you. And I wouldn't do that unless I really like their website. Their repair manual is very user-friendly. It's very complete. And they offer repair manuals for a lot of cars, which I highly recommend. If you're a DIY mechanic, you own a car, you're planning to keep it at 10, 15 years, it's a really good manual. It's, it's derived directly from the official repair manual from Toyota. So I highly recommend you guys check them out if you're looking for a repair manual. I think their prices are good. Um, they were kind enough to give us a discount code across their website. I will leave all their information and the discount code in the description below. Having said that, let's get back to work. Let's bleed the car. All right, folks, now that the engine is running, we're gonna wait for both coolants, top them off as needed. We're gonna let this car run as long as it needs. What we're looking for is, I want my cooling fans to come on twice. Come on, turn off. Then after a while, come on, turn off. This is gonna take a long time. So we're gonna wait for this car to finish and then I'll catch you guys up when it's all done. All right, folks, I shut off the car so we can have better audio, but the fan did come on twice. We're good to go. Make sure your coolant's at full. The inverter coolant is at full as well. Install your caps back. These caps, if you have this style cap, you're gonna turn it around until you hear a final click. Right there. Same thing for the inverter coolant. You're going to turn it around until you feel that one click right there. We're all set. Now, one thing I will tell you folks, you're going to want to, after you put the caps, go for a drive, drive the car, take it for a few mile drive, then bring it back and recheck your coolant level. Make sure the coolant level is at full. Then give it after like three, four days, when the car is fully warmed up, double check the inverter coolant it might need a small top off and that's about it guys as you see this is very simple and there's not much to it one thing i will tell you that is very important about the inverter coolant when you're about ready you you're about to put your cap on look inside the reservoir you'll see the coolant swirling around like you'll see a movement of coolant you want to see that movement of coolant i tried my best to capture it in this video it's not very clear but you'll see a clear movement of coolant you want to see that because if you don't see that, you could have a giant air bubble that is blocking everything. And at that point, you need to let it bleed some more before you install the cap back. And to exit maintenance mode at the end, just shut off the car. The car will automatically go back to normal mode 
and you're all set. So there you have it, guys. That was very simple. I recommend you do this yourself if you're mechanically able. Don't be afraid of the hybrid system. You're not working with high voltage wires here. It's just a simple drain and fill and bleed. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something new. If you liked it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.